In the first video of this series on installing the Zen Framework 2 Skeleton application, we saw how to get this basic home page up and running, and we also saw how to create our custom domain name. In my case, I'm using skeleton.dev. However, you could use whatever domain name you wanted here. So you should see this page up and running right now. If you're not seeing this, please go back to the first video and review what we covered there until you see the same result that I'm seeing right now. So what we're going to cover in the second tutorial is creating the albums database for this skeleton application. And we're also going to make sure that our HT access file is working as it should be. So the first thing you can do is go up to your URL bar and just type some gibberish after your domain name. And you should see this 404 page from Zend. If you do happen to be one of the people that is not seeing this 404 page right here, it means that your hdbd.com file is not configured correctly. So what we're going to do for those people is just quickly go over to the code editor here and look at a few examples of hdbd.com files. So no matter if you're using MAMP or MAMP Pro or if you're using XAMP or using WAMP, the situation is going to be the same with this. By default, um, within your directory block, you are going to have allow override set to none. So if we read what this block says right here, it says first we configure the default to be a very restrictive set of features. So by default, we see that allow override is set to none within these directory blocks here. What this means is that any of your sites within your www folder or your htdocs file, the HD access files that are used within those projects are not going to be able to take effect. So if you wanted to configure this on a directory wide base or for any of your web applications, what you could do is select allow override to all and I believe you can also set it to file info and that is going to allow the HD access files within each of those projects to take effect and then you're going to be able to um, see things like this 404 error page and if we look at some of the rules within the HD access files you can see that no matter what the request was no matter what was in the domain um, it is going to route everything here through, through index.php and then within the Zend application, it's going to have the logic, uh, such as if there's no route set to show the 404 page. So if you wanted for all of your different projects for the HD access file to be used by default, you could just set this to all, and then you wouldn't have to really worry about anything else. Another way is to configure this within each of the vhosts. So for example, in the hdbd.conf for my MAMP Pro here, we can see the virtual host here um, for skeleton.dev. We saw how to create these in the first video in this series. You'll see within this vhost settings, which is going to override um, those overall settings, which I just showed you. So the virtual host is going to take precedence. And within here, you'll see I have an, a custom directory block within here. We have options includes follow sim links. And after that, we have allow override set to all. So for this specific project, skeleton.dev, um, the HD access file will be used because we have allow override set to all. So if you didn't have the 404 page showing, just make sure to go over to your hdbd.com file and on a server-wide basis set allow override to all or else within the individual vhost settings which take precedence over that, make sure you set have allow override set to all and then restart Apache and then go back to your browser and put in some gibberish and you should be able to see Zen's 404 page. So the page that I'm working right now on ZF2's website is getting started with Zen Framework 2. Uh, we've covered this some assumptions part. We've configured our htaccess file so that works. And I'm just going to scroll down here to the tutorial application. So we see that we're going to create an application about some albums and we're going to have different pages in our application such as a list of albums a page to add new albums, edit album. So we know we're creating a CRUD about albums and we need to create this database first. Uh, we'll see we need some fields within this table. Uh, we should have a field of ID, an artist, and title. So the first thing you want to do is go over to your command line or your PHP MyAdmin or whatever you use to interact with your MySQL database and let's go ahead and create this database. So I'm just going to use phpMyAdmin to save time here and I'm going to create a new database called Skeleton. Let's make this a bit bigger here. And for the collation with your databases, most of the time you're going to want to set the collation to UTF-8. 
because whenever you're mixing languages and also you don't know what's going to be in your database in the future so if you want to keep things really flexible just set your database by default um, to be UTF-8 bin so let's just look for that here so select UTF-8 bin and then click create we'll see that the database skeleton has been created so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to click on that now and I'm going to create a new table here and let's just call this albums for now we can always change that later and if we go back to this page here it seems that we need to have three columns right now so I'll put in three for the number of columns and hit go so you'll now be taken to this page where you can set up the schema for your table uh, if we go back here we'll see we need three tables ID artist and title so let's put those in here ID artist and table. We know that ID is going to be the auto incrementing primary key ID. That is going to be set to an integer. By default this will be a length of 11 but we can also just be explicit and put that in there. For artists and table these are going to be varchars of length of 100. So That means we'll be able to store strings in here but not exceeding 100 characters. If you did exceed 100 characters it's still going to insert to it but it's going to truncate everything that's longer than 100 characters. If we look again at the overview here, we'll see that none of these columns should be allowed to be null, and the ID should be a primary key in auto incrementing. So let's go back over to PHP MyAdmin here, and you'll see that null is not checked for any of them, that's what we want. However, for the ID, we are going to set the index to primary here, and we're also going to tick AI so it's auto incrementing, and that is all we have to do here, so I'll hit save and we'll see that that albums table has been created now if I click structure we'll be able to see the schema for this our ID has an int of 11 there's no default it's not nullable auto increment and the artisan table are both far chars of 100 the collation is UTF, UTF 8 bin so we could put English in this Chinese Greek any really any language so everything is set up here so that's all we need to do for this tutorial. If we go back over to the site here, we'll see that we've done everything for this page right now. And I'm just going to click the link on the right here, getting started a skeleton application. That's the next page within this tutorial. Actually, we've already done all of this um, within the first tutorial. So I'll just hit next one more time. The next page is going to be modules. So if we go over to that page, we can preview what we're going to learn in the next tutorial. We are going to be setting up our album module, so I'll see you in that video.